It is clear that briefing and brief holding time are not the same throughout the day. Many things affect our brief. For example, meals, stress, emotions, thermal regulation. Now, sleep is another very big fact. In fact, for most people, brief holding time is smallest during early morning hours. Even in healthy people, breath holding time is smallest and breathing is heaviest during these times. Let us look at this Italian study. During the evening sessions, most of the BHT delta PACO2 ratios were higher than the corresponding morning values. Title of the study – Voluntary breath holding in the morning and in the evening. Clinical Science 2004 This effect of lower breath holding time and increased breathing is even stronger in sick people. Consider people with asthma. In one of the studies published in Thorax about 30 years ago, the goal of the study was to explain the sudden nature of some asthma deaths as this often occur in the early morning. The title of the study – Physiological Patterns in Early Morning Asthma. Thorax 1977. Consider a wider health problem – COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Symptoms related to sleep disturbances are common in individuals with moderate or severe COPD, particularly in the elderly, which is commonly manifested as morning fatigue and early awakenings. One major cause of morbidity in this population is abnormalities in gas exchange and resultant hypoxemia as they can lead to elevated pulmonary pressures, dyspnea, and in severe cases, right ventricular overload and failure. Sleep has profound adverse effects on respiration and gas exchange in patients with COPD. Title of the study – Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease and Sleep – The Interaction. Pan Minerva Medicina, 2006. Another study done by American researchers published in the Chest magazine found that COPD patients are most likely to die during early morning hours. Epidemiological investigation has revealed that patients with pulmonary disease are at increased risk of dying during the early morning hours. The title of the study – Myocardial Stress, Exercise versus Sleep in Patients with COPD. Chest 1984. Now, if patients with pulmonary disease have problems, and in fact, in this study, they found that breathing is so heavy that it's similar to maximum exercise, what about cardiac patients? Coronary spasm occurs most often from midnight to early morning when the patient is at rest. The title of the study, Coronary Spasm, Clinical Features and Pathogenesis, published in the Internal Medicine, 1997. Trying to explain these deaths, Turkish cardiologist conducted their own research, trying to find out what was the cause, background. Several studies related to cardiac events, including sudden death, have shown a peak incidence in the early morning hours. The title of the study – Circadian Variations in QTC Dispersion. Is it a clue to the morning increase of sudden cardiac death? published in Clinical Cardiology, 1999. Just one year ago, Australian medical professionals published a research about what was going on in the brain of healthy people during morning hours, and they found that there is a connection with the stroke. These data indicate that normal diurnal changes in the cerebrovascular response to CO2 influence the hypercapnic ventilatory response, as well as the level of cerebral oxygenation during changes in arterial PCO2. This may be a contributing factor for diurnal changes in breathing stability and the high incidence of stroke in the morning. Title of the study – Morning Attenuation in Cerebrovascular CO2 Reactivity in Healthy Humans is associated with a lowered cerebral oxygenation and an augmented ventilatory response to CO2. Journal of Applied Physiology, 2007. So, we found people have higher risk to die from stroke during early morning hours. Californian neurologists found the same result. This reduced morning response to hypercapnia suggests diminished vasodilator reserve during this period and may be related to the increased stroke risk during these morning hours. Title of the study – Morning Reduction of Cerebral Vasomotor Reactivity. Neurology 1994. Now, there is another condition which is not as severe as those ones, but people still can develop various complications. I'm talking about diabetes. Let us look at the study which devoted to briefing and other parameters, blood parameters of patients with diabetes. Circadian rhythm of tissue oxygen balance and blood rheological properties were investigated in 40 patients with insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. 
Preserved blood hyperviscosity and increasing tissue hypoxia at night indicated stable disturbance of hemorrhological properties and tissue oxygen balance. Title of the study – Desynchronization of circadian rhythm of the oxygen balance in the tissues and triological properties of the blood in type 1 diabetes mellitus. Published in Therapy Archives. 1988. A group of Japanese scientists were investigating breathing of epileptic and they concluded that it's very important to take good care about these patients, especially during early morning hours. This is what we wrote. CY paroxysm combined with clinical symptoms and continuing for more than 4 seconds were fewer during the afternoon than the morning and moreover during sleep. Therefore, the observation of typical absent seizures during the morning should be regarded as important. The title of the study – The Circadian Rhythm of Typical Absence Seizures, the Frequency and Duration of Paroxysmal Discharges, published in the Neuropediatrics, 1990. There is even a special health condition, which is caused morning sickness. It affects about two-thirds of women during the first trimester of pregnancy. They experience nausea and vomiting. What I found with my own students, that breath-holding time for most of them is much less during early morning hours. I would say that only probably 10% of people or less have about the same breath-holding time abilities and about the same breathing as in the evening. Now, about half of the people have very big reduction, so that morning breath-holding time two times, sometimes three times less than in the evening. That means that people breathe two, three times heavier during morning early hours. And this is definitely the reason, the cause of death. Imagine a person with heart disease or asthma. During daytime, breath holding time of such person, as we found before, is about 15 seconds. It's quite reasonable time, it's not very good, but people can function, people can walk. But in the morning hours, if it drops three times, it's only five seconds. And this is the time when cardiac arrest, heart attacks, stroke, and other problems are very, very likely. Breath holding time is too short, breathing is very, very heavy. Now we can also think about the following phenomenon. Doctors usually investigate sick patients. And when sick patients arrive, the breathing is actually okay. And doctors trying to find the disease, they cannot find it. Because breathing is not great, but it's closer to the norm. But during early morning hours, breathing is much heavier. And this is the time when the most damage done to the body. Consider, for example, the patients with asthma. What happens during early morning hours? Breathing is heavy. The immune system can be conditioned to some pathogens. Inflammation is increased. More mucus is produced. Later, the same asthmatics go to the hospital. Well, they can find something, but is on the road of recovery. Consider the heart patient. The situation is the same. During the daytime, breathing is more or less good. And cardiac professionals Scientific research is trying to find the disease, we do not see it. Now, people with other conditions, for example, tumors. When tumors are growing, tumors are growing in condition of hypoxia. But later, and this is exactly happened during early morning hours, the same patient can go to the hospital to researches. We can try to find something, nothing. The tumor is not growing. It's a mysterious disease which comes insidiously in some treacherous way for just for two, three, four hours and produce damage during early morning hours. Now, what are the causes of morning hyperventilation? We are numerous. We are related to lifestyle changes which took place during last hundred years. For example, we have very soft beds. We sleep too long. We sleep on the back. We breathe through the mouth during night. Our windows are closed. Air quality is not good enough. There are many other factors like warm blankets, big pillows that affect quality of sleep. We can investigate these factors in more details in the section devoted to the causes of hyperventilation.